Sun Masuo means the Great Ice. It has protected our land for millions of years. Inuit believe that all is one. What happens to the ice happens to the river, the people, the animals. What happens to one happens to everyone. The Great Ice Sheet of Greenland is the second largest ice body in the world. It is an essential element in Earth's climate. What happens in Greenland today can give us an idea of what is going to happen in our temperate areas in the next decades. That's why it is so important to examine uh, the Greenland Ice Sheet. We need to understand the past dynamics to anticipate the dramatic environmental and climatic shifts that may occur in the future. I was a very small boy when I decided I wanted to be a hunter. Listening to the stories of my uncle, I felt alive. I thought, one day I want to tell the same stories to my kids and grandkids. When I was 10 years old, I moved to Denmark. My parents split and I followed my dad. It was the worst time of my life. A Greenlandic boy is not made for big cities, but maybe any boy is. I became as grey as those buildings. I was counting the days to go back to my blue waters and fresh air, but that made me even stronger. You know, I'm not a quitter. That's what nature taught me. Don't give up, ever. If you didn't get a seal, keep on trying. I haven't counted how many times, maybe a couple of times, I almost died. I was 16 when I understood I wanted to be a geographer. I had a big spinal operation at that time and I couldn't move. I spent more than a year stuck in bed, not knowing if I would be able to walk again. The only thing that was giving me hope was a small window. I could see the clouds through it. They were moving and turning into water and vapor again. I was so fascinated. I wanted to understand how our Earth works. I kept dreaming of clouds, glaciers and icebergs, and I promised myself that one day I would make it here, in the Arctic, surrounded only by nature. I still remember the first time I was alone out there. Only water and ice for three days, it felt like breathing again. I said to myself, that's where I belong. That's where I can be free. I have kids now. I want them to live like I did. I don't want them to become gray city boys. I'm just passing it on like my uncle did with me and my grandfather with him. He learns fast because he has it in his DNA. It has been in our blood for thousands of years. It has been 14 years now since my first polar expedition. And I have more than 20 scientific campaigns on my shoulders. But I still feel the same thrill. Being up here all alone walking around all these virgin moraines and touch glaciers, sharing a soup with my colleagues. Atún con tomate. Buenísimo. Quiero ver, ¿no? Riquísimo. Maravilloso. <laughs> Fresco. Fresco. Recién salido de la lonja. Eh, es una delicatessen. Seeing with my own eyes what I have been researching for years, understanding how it is transforming. This is, for me, the most exciting thing on Earth.
en un paisaje que poca gente ha tenido la, la, la suerte de, de, de ver, son experiencias que se mueven en, en lo intangible y, 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 y te dan algo que no sabría definir. Son experiencias únicas que, que, que tienen su magia y que te, te agarran. The Arctic is like this. Either you hate it or you love it. And when you love it, you want to come back again and again. Granau is the northernmost town of Greenland. We are way up in the Arctic Circle, in the middle of a fjord, miles away from civilization. There's only one road that goes from the airport to the cemetery. All the rest is water and ice. But life is changing even up here. The supermarket made life much easier but we still need to hunt and fish to survive. With supermarket food, you will freeze up here. There's a balance we have for years in Arctic of taking something and always giving something back. There is no stealing. You always have to ask for it. When I eat the novel, I feel its strength and wisdom entering my body. It becomes part of me. I know every single man in the village. There are fewer hunters than there used to be, but they will never give up our traditions. We could never live any other way. On way home, uh, then I saw a, a polar bear. Take it, you know. It's yours, like the nature gave me. Wow. You know, it was only me who saw it. Uh, he looked at me also. It, it was like the polar bear chose me. I was excited, you know, I, I was relieved uh, because it is a very strong, big, dangerous animal, you know, and I killed it. Yeah, it's a part of me, you know. An Arctic campaign is like a village. Everyone depends on each other and only all together can we make it work. After three weeks all together 24-7, you get to know each other better than people you have known for years. Together, you go through every kind of misadventure. Tengo papel. Tengo <laughs> ¿A cuánto? ¿A cuánto? 10 euros. ¿Es nuevo? ¿Usado? Usado, pero poco. <laughs> <laughs> A mí hoy me está resultando ya un poquito... Duro. Demasiado, ¿no? Demasiado, espero... No, a ver, demasiado tampoco es demasiado, ¿no? Pero, joder, que... Qué mala suerte, Jolín. Eso ha sido una mala suerte. You have to be prepared to stay stuck in an airport for days because of a storm, sleep at minus 10 in a small tent, or fear a polar bear attack, or an helicopter that cannot come to rescue you because of the wind to be far away from family and friends for weeks or even months. Life in the Arctic is tough, but that's what we came here for, to learn, to remember where we came from. Time is different up here. It's time of nature. Some days the wind won't allow you to navigate and others, the storm will destroy the road. You learn to go with it, to be part of nature's ribbon. During this campaign for the New Arctic project, we choose this remote area of Greenland because there is no data. Estamos ahora mirando a ver si si podemos acampar aquí. No estamos seguros porque toda esta zona es una zona de lavado del de, de la morrena. Por otra parte, es el único sitio que hemos visto. Es una zona un poquito abombada y parece que si llueve podría caer por allí, por allí. Pero estamos viendo que todo este sector es una zona inestable, ¿no? Y nos queremos asegurar antes de, de escoger el sitio donde donde montar el campamento. We are collecting samples of rocks left by the glacier to understand whether the glacial shrinking is unprecedented or if any past periods recorded similar glacial responses. But it's much harder than it seems. The natural system is way more complicated. 
I think after years of research, studies, campaigns, places, that's the biggest lesson I've got from nature. Humility. To be a scientist and to admit that I don't know everything. There are many things that I don't know. The data we collect here is like a grain of sun in the ocean, but the grain will help another scientist better understand what's happening with the natural system, and maybe another one to find answers. It's a little grain that help us get closer, help us understand our Earth better. Por decirlo así, nuestro trabajo acaba aquí. Después vendrán otros científicos que trabajan con la parte de modelización y cogerán los datos de clima y de glaciares y dirán, muy bien, con 3 grados menos los glaciares están aquí, con 4 grados menos están aquí. Nosotros damos los datos y ellos lo que hacen es intentar reproducir cuáles serán los escenarios futuros. I think Inuit will make it through because our ancestors did thousands of years before us. We know how to do it, but we have to keep on doing it the same old way. That's what my ancestors taught me. From here. Yes. <laughs> Nature has balance. It must be respected. The greed of man makes the earth unhappy. That's what I want to teach my son. How to keep that balance. Things are changing so fast here, and we need to listen. The loss of sea ice and permafrost thawing will severely impact these coastal Inuit communities and their access to traditional food. As scientists, we cannot be on the ground year-round observing environmental conditions, while Inuit who are traveling, hunting and harvesting are doing science every day. No other living culture has maintained such a continuous and consistent way of life for such a long time, and we need to incorporate their ancestral knowledge and their voice in the study of climate change if we want to make it through. A hunter once told me that all is one, and I believe that it is what I have learned up here. The drop becomes the river, the people, the animals. What happens to one happens to everyone. 